Who's glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Got it now. Come on, let's clap our hands. I'd like to welcome everyone to New Life Pentecostal Church, where we believe you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored. At this time, our pastor is going to come make a few announcements. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It is good to be in the Lord's house tonight. Amen. I have had uh, some calls this afternoon of some prayer needs that I want to give to the church before we go too far. Um, I know Myra Howell contacted us um, that Blakely had punctured her eardrum this afternoon and they had taken her to the hospital. And so I would like the church family to just to remember her in prayer. Also remember um, Brother Brewer's mother. She is uh, not doing very well right now. She's in a terrible condition in a hospital in Missouri. That's where Sister Brewer is at in family right now. Uh, she has just asked prayer. So if we could kind of remember that need, uh, just keep that before the Lord. Um, also, I know there are a lot of people that, that have been stuck in traffic today. It has been coming south, has been really terrible this afternoon. So uh, just pray for them, pray for the safety of everybody on the road. All right, getting right into our announcements. If you'll notice the QR code, I would encourage you to take out your phone whenever you, this flashes up and scan it. You'll have the announcements, you'll have details for what you need every month. And uh, just you can screenshot it once you have it on your phone and you kind of have details to go back to every time. And then again, every Tuesday night at 7.30, we have prayer here at the church. And the first Tuesday of every month, we have youth prayer. We had a tremendous crowd last night and we had a tremendous prayer meeting. It was, um, I really felt and seen just a lot more people just really being more free. And we had some folks that had never been to prayer meeting before. That was wonderful. But it was just a tremendous service last night. Uh, this coming Sunday is Father's Day. Make sure if you're uh, if a father in your life, maybe your husband, maybe uh, you know a father that needs to come to church that you're friends with, invite them to church. Encourage them. We'll have some nice things to give to those fathers as just sort of a token of appreciation for the, the role they play in the family. And uh, just encourage them to come out to service. And then, as always, we need volunteers. We need volunteers at the church. I'm actually working on something now to highlight things and places people can work and do that a lot of times we don't think about. And so I'll be getting that to the church. Uh, music practice, June the 26th at 4 p.m. Music department and singers. Uh, make sure that you put that on your calendar and you're there and don't forget about that. Uh, also, for many of you people who aren't on Facebook, but you do have YouTube, you can follow the services on YouTube. You can uh, like that, share that, listen to those there. And then Vacation Bible School, July the 5th through the 8th. And there is pre-enrollment that we're trying to encourage so we know how many to plan for. And then there's a t-shirt pre-order on the back table. If you turn and look at that back door, there's a black table uh, there. And please, I encourage you tonight, Sunday, and the next coming days, pick up one of those pre-order forms. Uh, or fill, it, fill that out and then pre-register your child, uh, turn that in. So we, it helps us plan so that we can do the best job possible. Crusaders camp is coming up next week. That's June the 20th through the 24th. We will be leaving Monday at 1 p.m. Um, so we've got a good group going. We've got a good group of adults that are going to go. And we're excited about it. But make sure your child is here. We'll talk Sunday very quickly after church. I'll try to have um, just the requirements and things just so that everybody is fresh and knows what um, we need to plan for and do for um, just to make sure that your child has the best experience that we can possibly do. And then if you'd like to give online, uh, we obviously encourage everybody to be faithful in giving to the church in their tithes and their offerings. But some people like to uh, do online giving and we have GiveLify here at the church, so we, we have that. We also have PayPal. You can find that on our website, but you can uh, set up GiveLify. It's very easy to do. And then tonight is our Boys and Girls Bible Study. Uh, that will be after music, pra uh, music service tonight, a worship service. They'll go into their respective places. This month, we have no men's and women's Bible studies because we wanted to make 
uh, this week available for camp meeting. And camp meeting is this week. Uh, if anyone uh, is interested in going, um, I actually had the information. I didn't bring it to the pulpit. But I have it now. Amen. Thursday night, well, Thursday, it's all day. Um, their service is 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. split sessions. There's an 11 a.m. morning service. And then there's a 7 p.m. evening service. Um, Brother Doug White, Pastor Doug White, is going to be ministering Thursday night at 7 p.m. He is a tremendous minister. I think he pastors actually several churches, at least. I know more than one. Um, he does a tremendous job. Uh, it is at the Bessemer Civic Center. And then Friday night, and uh, my, my family, we're going to try to go Friday night. Anyone that would like to go and doesn't know how to you know, get there, you can follow us if you want to go in at the same time. Um, definitely, you're, you're welcome to follow us and go with us. But if you would like to go and be a part of that, all day. Again, there's 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. split sessions, and then you've got 11 a.m. morning service, and then at 7 p.m. again, Brother Doug White will be there. But I know a lot of people, several people have asked me about camp meeting, and again, that is this week, and Thursday and Friday night are definitely the big nights to go. And if you would like to go, um, me and my wife, one, can give you more information. Um, I'm sure there are others that can, but uh, you're, you're more than welcome and more than encouraged to go and be a part of that. And then again, I men mentioned it, but I want to reiterate this month there was no food pantry this month. Please, please, please help us remember that. And then Liberty Day float. Last year, our youth had a Liberty Day float. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of success. Had a great time. Had a good group of kids. We have more kids this year in the youth that are going to be involved in that. And so if you have a child, even a youth, uh, a pre-youth child or youth that would like to ride on the float, please see Sister Kendra, and she can kind of help give you the information that you're going to need to know about getting ready, getting on board, helping decorate. We're actually going to decorate, I believe, the day of Liberty Day. Um, we saved a lot of our decorations from last year. They've been put up. And then we've already purchased some additional decorations for this year just to keep adding to it year by year, making it better, better, and better. All right, if we could, let's stand to our feet tonight. I'm going to bring up Brother Shane tonight. He's going to lead us in prayer. How many of you are ready for church tonight? Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord as they lead us in prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you tonight, God. We thank you for this service tonight. God, we thank you, God, for your... Touch, God, we feel tonight, God, in this place, Lord, the spirit that's moving in this place tonight, God, we ask you, Lord, tonight, God, go each and every one of us tonight, God, in this service, God, touch the people that are sick, God, that just can't be here tonight, God, those that are lost and undone, we ask you, Lord, tonight, God, let your word go forth and minister to people tonight, in Jesus' name.
let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Brother Kevin, if you could bless the offering. Amen.
Hallelujah. Could we just sing that chorus softly? You are holy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Holy. You are holy. We will offer you our praise in a mighty clap our hands with all of our might to the Lord. Amen. I have one last announcement that was clearly written, and I just missed it. It's, I'm looking at my wife. She can conference. Now, that's hard to say that. The tongue twister. There is a she can conference, July the 22nd and the 23rd for young ladies between the ages of 8 and 18. There is a $40 registration fee. And tonight, Sister Brittany is going to be talking to these young ladies about that. And uh, I, I hope that there is some interest. And I also hope that um, if there is interest, there is support um, from their parents to help encourage them to be a part of that. So with that said, there's your announcement that I missed. And then I'm going to dismiss at this time our boys and girls Bible study groups to head to their respective places. And those that are a little young for that class, uh, they can be taken to their class. Everyone can be seated. Uh, I appreciate you. Y yes, ma'am. For who? For Ishmael. We actually prayed. Ishmael, we prayed for you last night. Sister Bean didn't go into a lot of detail, but said that there was a either potential sickness or something that you've been battling. Uh, and while Ishmael's coming up, I'd like to ask my wife if she'll come. Um, she's having some some issues right now. She felt like it may be a gallbladder type situation. Not sure what it is. But we're going to pray. I'd like to ask some brothers and sisters both to come forward tonight if we can. And let's just go ahead and stand to our feet as we pray over. And I encourage any of you sisters and any of you brothers to come forward. And let's lay hands on the sick tonight. Amen. It just so happened I told my wife after church I have to go to work at the hospital. You can ride with me. She said, I may go with you into the emergency room, so, but we're going to pray that God's hand's going to be upon her and Ishmael both. Right now, let us pray. Lord, we love you tonight, Jesus. God, and we know that your hand is able to reach us and to extend to us and touch whatever the need is. God, I know, Lord, that you see our infirmities, and you are a God that is touched and moved by the feeling of our infirmities. And so tonight, we come and ask, Lord, that you meet the need. Lord, whatever it is, God, we're, we're not physicians and we don't claim to be, but we know the great physician. We know, God, that your hand is not slack concerning promises. And, Lord, we know, God, that you can show yourself mighty and powerful. We ask tonight that you would heal, God, that you would save and deliver. Lord, we ask this, God, to be done in your mighty name, Jesus. And we give you praise, if you will, in faith. Praise God for the miracle tonight. Mighty God, we give you all praise. Amen, amen, amen. You can return to your seat. So as I was praying last night here at prayer meeting, um, uh, the Lord kind of nudged me with a thought. And I appreciate the Lord doing that ahead of time uh, because he obviously knew what the traffic was going to be like. It took me two hours to drive 45 miles. And so he knew that I was going to be pressed for time today before I knew it. And he put a thought in my mind. And as soon as I got in the truck on the way home uh, for work this afternoon, uh, there was a uh, scripture that came to my mind. 
And so I started just connecting the two as the Lord had given them to me. Um, but I, I want to ask a question because what the Lord kind of put in my spirit last night what was the battle in our mind. And we, we battle in our minds and we, um, we face that, that, that struggle. Now, you may not be facing it right now. You may be on a spiritual mountaintop. I mean, you may be. You, you literally may be at the best place you've ever been. But that doesn't mean that somebody here is not struggling mentally. And I'm not talking about, you know, you're having to go to the psychiatrist and you're having to lay down on the couch and talk about all your feelings. I'm talking about there's something in your head that's hindering you from touching God and, and really getting liberty in the Lord and really breaking free. And uh, so the, the Lord just kind of began to impress on me sometimes we're our own worst enemy. And I thought, well, okay, I can agree with that. I mean, we know we fight the devil, but sometimes all the devil has to do is just tee the ball up and we go to swing it. So I want to kind of ask a few little questions. Number one, have you ever been in a place where you felt resistance or you felt burden when you got to church, when you walked in, or when you were on your way? Almost like everything was fine and all of a sudden your attitude began to change a little bit. Almost like you just got, I mean, you know, for no reason in the world. No reason in the world. And it's as if an attitude showed up. Got in your spirit. Out of nowhere. Where you feel cold spiritually. You get aggressive for no reason. You hadn't seen anybody there, so nobody's made you mad today. You may begin to feel resistant to worship. I mean, there's no explanation for it. I mean, hadn't even got there yet, I don't even feel like worship. Resistant to the Spirit and to the people of God and to the Word of God. And, and I understand there are times where we're tired. And you just don't have the, you know, the energy that maybe you did if you'd slept 10 hours. And, you know, you'd had plenty of orange juice for breakfast. And, you know, everything was good. Uh, you know, all your, all, everything was just perfect. Sometimes we just have days where we're tired. And, and I think we know the difference between when we're tired or when we're sick or when there's a spiritual problem that we're facing. And I, I know I said that rhetorically when I asked the question because I know we've all faced that before. I mean, we all have. And so I really want to speak to that feeling tonight, that feeling of resistance or that feeling of, uh, uh, of just where we feel like we don't fit in. We feel like they're, everybody's against us or everybody's looking at us. Or, or just, I mean, even if they're not, you just feel like you get here, I just feel like something's failing. Just like some, there's something on us. And it hinders us from moving beyond where we are when we get here to get to a place to receive what we need from God. Because it's so hard to get past that feeling. Amen? It's hard to get past that feeling. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? So when we operate in faith, we don't see it, and we don't necessarily touch it. We just, we fake it. But that enemy that tees up that feeling and that opportunity for us to get in that, that place, that resistance. We begin to feel that, and that becomes more real to us than the faith that we have. Now, it is possible to have faith and unbelief at the same time. The disciples said, Lord, help our unbelief. They had faith, but their unbelief got in the way. That carnal side got in the way. And we, there's, we could go in depth in this a lot. I'm just trying to speak briefly on this tonight. 
Most of our battles, as I said, are in the mind. Most of our battles occur earlobe to earlobe, which is the heart of man. Now, when we talk about the heart of man, we always think of the muscle in the chest that pumps the blood. But when we, when we speak spiritually concerning the heart of man, the heart of man is the concept, his concept, his consciousness. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I don't think right here in my, my chest. I think here in my mind. That's the spiritual heart. That's what we're talking about, right? When we say I love, I love your, uh, my wife with all of my heart, I don't love her with all that thing in my chest. I love her with every thought, every, every emotion that comes out of the mind, everything. That's where it is, right? That battle is won where we think. Or it's lost where we think. And of course, the devil and sin play a role. Right? It plays a role and sin plays a role in that. Now, as I said, there are times when it feels like we're just under this huge spiritual attack. But sometimes all the devil has to do is just lay a small trap, plant one seed, and we're all too willing to till the garden for it. We're all too eager sometimes to take that bait and run with it. Amen? We bite into that bad speed. We bite into that notion that everybody's against you. We bite into that, that seed of deception that, that God can't use us and doesn't love us and that Brother Josh doesn't care about you. We bite into that. All the enemy has to do sometimes is just plant the smallest of seed. Just a little. Not even, not even. Sometimes if the devil gets me, I want him to at least have to work hard. I'm not saying I'm never going to fall and stumble, but man, if he gets me, I want him to at least have to work for it. Sometimes he just has to plant a little seed. That's all it takes. Many times it's just our mind that is magnifying that enemy and magnifying the problem and blowing it out of proportion. And before you know it, we have sown doubt discouragement and deception in our own mind in our own mind you remember what the heart the Bible says about the heart that it is a somebody said it desperately wicked deceitful so our thoughts will betray us that's why the Bible says that we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Amen? That's what it says. Transformed by the renewing of our mind. Now, I realize that I've not given a text, but I'm going to give one. I do have one, I promise. So if you'll go ahead and put up Romans 8 and 1. And so as I got in the truck this afternoon, this scripture came into my spirit. It's good scripture. I don't preach it a lot. I'm not that there's anything wrong with it. I don't, you know, just, I don't know. Get to tonight though. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. All right. So, no, we're still talking about how do we overcome and how do we deal with that spirit that we get sometimes when we're coming to the house of God or we're getting around church folks that out of nowhere shows up and we just don't feel like we fit in, we don't belong, we don't love anybody, and nobody loves us. Amen? I said, it's been a little while back, 
But it ought to be a red flag to you if you have a problem fellowshipping with people of like faith. That ought to be a red flag. Well, you don't know how, how they've wronged me. You don't know how they would love to ask your forgiveness or how they would love for you to forgive them. Just, just think on that. But the Bible says, and now I know it's, I'm, I've got a long reach to tie my thought in this together, but I'm going to do my best. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, if you walk after the flesh, there is condemnation in that. But if you stay, if you walk in the Spirit, there's no condemnation in it. So, I need to look at that word, what is condemnation? Now, when I was a kid, my, my children reminded me of this the other day. They said, Dad, what is hooked on phonics? I said, hooked on phonics, it worked for me. Well, what is it? I said, well, you know, when you guys were learning how to read, and I'd sit there with you, and I was trying to teach you to read, and I was screaming at you. I don't, I don't, did anybody here work with their kids learning how to read? I probably didn't do it the way I did. Church. C-H, what sound does that make, son? Ch. Right. What sound does the U make? Uh. Or U. Sometimes it makes uh. Okay, uh. What does the R make? Er. Okay, what sound does the ch make? Ch. I said, let's try it together. Ch. Er. Ch. And they like, I like, say it again. I'm screaming at them. Sound it out. Sound it out. So we first we learned how to read, right? The next thing we learned in school was how to like take the big words and break them down. Okay? Condemnation is a perfect example of that. What's the root word in condemnation? Condemn. Not nation. It's not nation. It is not nation. It's condemn. It's condemn. I think it, if you live in condemnation, you're living in the nation where you are condemned. But it's to be condemned. That's what it means. Condemnation is the state of being condemned. Now, what does condemned mean? Okay, because like, I feel like we think we know, but maybe there's a hesitation like it was a trick question. So it's really not a trick question. In order to be condemned, you have to have been sentenced to something. That means that you didn't get off, that you've not been set free. That means that you're guilty of the law, that the punishment is now yours. Now, if you're in Christ, you're not guilty. You're not condemned. But if you're, if you're not in Christ, you'll be, you're condemned. Okay? Now, we, there is a fine line, I think, between condemnation and another word. And that word is conviction. That word is conviction. Because, I mean, let's be honest, they both start with C's. And they both have a lot of syllables. And it's easy for us sometimes, and, you know, we've got like this, like, glass door Christianity, like we're shopping in, the, in, in, in you know, department store window. We just pick words and interchange them. And, you know, because we're trying to be spiritual, we get it all mixed up. But there's a difference between condemnation and conviction. There's a big difference in that. Conviction, what is conviction? Conviction is godly sorrow. The Bible says godly sorrow worketh repentance. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. And there's a difference between how you feel. Condemnation, you feel terrible. I'm about, to, I'm about to, I think you're about to feel where I'm going. You stand before the judge. The 
jury foreman unfolds the verdict. He reads guilty. Amen? Hands it to the judge. It's proclaimed. And then what happens next is the judge sentences you. That is when you are condemned. Now there's been a lot of people condemned that were guilty and were punished. There's a lot that were condemned that were innocent and punished. It happens. It's no perfect world. No perfect system. Do the best we can. But imagine that feeling when the verdict is handed down and the judge says, here's your punishment. Imagine, I'm not talking about running a stop sign and you get, hey, you got to go to driving school. I'm talking about you're going to get life in prison, no possibility of parole. Think of this. I mean, and we don't really, the death penalty is used, but it's not used near like it used to be. But imagine... If, if anybody ever studied war and, and, and armies and militaries and things like that, you know they would put people in front of a firing squad, right? Could you imagine being marched down to stand in front of the wall knowing that the firing squad is loading the guns? You know the whole time there's no escape. Imagine right now, think of how that would feel. Being marched to stand in front of a wall. And imagine if you were the second group of people. Like somebody else has done then. Think of that. And you look ahead as you're walking to the area. And you got the wall. I can imagine some brick wall. Block wall. And there's blood splattered on the wall. Bodies laying there from the people that went out an hour ahead of you. This is where this has happened. This happens in countries today. This is how... Anytime there's been major political upheaval in, 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 in countries, this happens. And as you're mar- imagine that, try to picture that feeling that you would have marching to that area knowing there's no escape. That thought that you've got, that's condemnation. How heavy that must be. How desperate it must feel. How utterly hopeless. How Depth of despair it would be. That is condemnation. You feel that? Can you imagine what? That is condemnation. And that feeling that you get. When you can't seem to shake it. And I don't know where it's from. That's that's condemnation. I'm trying to do everything. We're going to get through that. Hold on. Conviction feels different. Let me tell you what conviction feels like. Conviction feels like judgment and correction with love and mercy. Here's the difference. The condemned are taken out with no hope. But the convicted has got an attorney that says, all right, judge, can we strike a bargain? Can we work out a deal before that is handed down? The Bible says that he is our advocate, our high priest. The Bible says that there is one mediator between God and man. It is Jesus Christ the righteous. What that means is you've got somebody to go to before judgment is given to you. Conviction. Well, I, that's why when we say, you hear somebody say, preacher, step on my toes. They're not wanting the preacher to be ugly to them. They're wanting the preacher to preach correction to them that has love in it. And the different, it's all the word of God's always got love in it. It's mercy from cover to cover. But the difference is what we bring. What we bring. I can tell you that a judge right now 
and a district attorney, prosecuting attorney, if you come before them and you have an attitude that's rotten, if you are belligerent, if you have lied, if you have ran, if you have bore false witness, if you have been belligerent in questioning, they're going to pin you with everything they can do because they know there is no repentance, there's no remorse. But if they begin to pick up, you know what, he's a first-time offender or he really was at the wrong place at the wrong time, he really got with the wrong crowd. He, you know what? He, he, he really seems to be remorseful. Let's make a deal with him. And you know in our justice system, they've got all kinds of deals. They'll offer you 10 years with a 7-10 seven, seven, split or something. There's all kinds of things they'll do. Try to work with you. But they'll begin to correct you, but show mercy. There's a different feeling in that. And what determines how we feel, what determines how we walk away from it, or even how we get there, is how we are in relationship with God. How we stand with the Almighty. Think about it. If any man be in Christ, let me, let's don't even go that far. Now, therefore, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ. If you want to get rid of the condemnation, you've got to be in Christ. Well, I, 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 I'm living for God. I, I've got the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about what you have been. I'm not talking what you, about what you've had. I'm talking about what you are right now. Let me tell you, if you're in Christ, there's not a day that goes by that you should not read that word. There's not a service or an opportunity you have to hear the preach word that it should not move you. It should not challenge you. It should not press against your flesh. And when you do that, you don't think everybody hates me. Everybody's against me. God don't like me. You walk away thinking, oh my goodness. God, I've fallen short. Lord, I need you to forgive me. Lord, I didn't even realize I was doing that wrong. I, God, I didn't even realize I had been doing this and, and that you didn't agree with it. Lord, I, I pray God that you'll forgive me because Lord, I, I see it now. Versus, this is what I'm going to do. The Bible says he resists the proud, but he gives grace unto. That's it, some people. I've heard some people say humble. I've heard some people say meek. It is the same. He gives grace unto the meek, the humble. It's the approach that you bring to God. And you say, well, let's get back to where we were. That feeling I get. The battle is in the mind. Well, I was in a bad place. You may have to tell yourself, i got to get out of that place that I've got my head in. I've got to get my thinking changed. I've got to begin. I know what my situation looks like. I know what my circumstance feels like. But the Bible says... Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I've got to tell myself that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than that feeling that sneaks up on me every time I try to get right with God. And instead of letting go, I retreat back into myself. You can essentially defeat that feeling. Let this mind be in you. 
which was also in Christ Jesus. He made himself of no reputation. He took on the servant. Changed the attitude. Changed the way you approach God. Lepers. Ten lepers. He healed all ten. Their leprosy was no longer a lie. Go show yourself to the priest. Because under the law, the priest had to declare you clean. Which meant that there was no longer active leprosy. One, when he was finished with the priest, went back, found Jesus with a spirit of humility, graciousness, humble. He began to thank him. And he said, oh, now you're whole. Now you're whole. I don't want to simply be bandaged up. God's got more for you than to bandage you up. Yes, we got to stop the spiritual bleeding. Yes, we've got to bind the wounds. Yes, but God wants to heal the hurt. He wants to wipe away every tear that is in your eye. He wants to restore the hopeless. Sister Rachel, if you'll come. If they'll put up 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 for me. I hope I'm saying something that's helping somebody tonight. And then I hope I really am. It says, therefore, if any man or woman, okay, I, we're living in a day and time now where everybody's messed up. And like people don't read the Bible because they don't understand when, when it says man, it's talking about mankind. So if you're a woman, Amen. You don't have to try to be a man for this to apply to you. Let's keep the, the distinction where it needs to be. If anybody is in Christ, he is a new creature. You're tired of that old feeling that you've got in your mind. You're tired of that old emotion that swells up in you. You're tired of that, that, that depression and discouragement and anxiety. You're tired of feeling like nobody likes you because it's not true. It's not true. It's not. You're tired of feeling that way. You need to become new again. You need to restore some things. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. Let's stand together tonight. I'm talking about a renewing of the mind. I'm talking about breaking the yoke of your mind. Amen. I'm talking about set at liberty them that are bruised. Set at liberty those in bondage. Amen. It can happen. It can happen. Somebody said, man, I see it now. I see this scripture now. The only thing that changed was your desire to search it. That is just further proof that all that ever needed to happen for deliverance to come into your mind is for you to embrace it. Embrace the miracle. Embrace the hand of God. Embrace the help of God. Embrace His hope. Let me correct myself on hope. Okay. Hope is a good word, right? But sometimes hope is not enough. Okay? Like hope is what we feel whenever our loved one's dying and we, we, we pretty much have made up their, our mind they're going to die, but we hope they live. Like we've really relegated that to we just, I want them to. Like, We've got to move beyond. I'm coming to church tonight, and I hope God helps me. You with me? Well, I hope God helps me. To faith. I know God's going to help me. I know God's going to help me. You'll never, now let's talk about this. You'll never receive the Holy Ghost thinking, I hope I get the Holy Ghost. 
You've got to want the Holy Ghost. You've got to seek the Holy Ghost. You have to seek it. You can't get it if you don't seek it. Lord, I really want the Holy Ghost, but I've sinned so much I'm not worthy. God, I'm not worthy. Lord, I, how could you ever want me? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, you can't do it. You cannot please God without faith. Condemnation is that feeling you get whenever you're not doing quite right. You're struggling a little bit. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm trying to relate to what you feel. Okay? Please don't think I'm trying to beat up. I'm trying to lift up. That's that. I want to help you identify. That's that feeling whenever you've not been quite doing right. And you run into somebody that's doing right. And you see them and put and for whatever reason in the world. You act like you don't like them when you've seen them and you just shook their hand at church on Sunday. Because you brushed up against the Holy Ghost and the righteousness of God. Because you weren't in Christ. You done got out of the, the family. Oh, but if any man be in Christ, he's a new. I'm telling you, it's real. That spirit that would afflict your mind is real. It's real. I'm going to tell you this. I, I shared this with a brother in the church. A few weeks ago, on the evening time, it was late. It was about 9 o'clock at night. I, was at, I pulled into the Chevron. It was me. I don't know where Joel was. Laura and Nathan. They had both went in the store. When we got out, I left my truck running the keys in it. We're not going to be long. You know, keep it. It's hot. We're going to keep it cool. I seen this gentleman that I went to school with, not same age, about a year older than me, so it wasn't really close in, in enough to, I could remember his name exactly, but I knew him, he, was, he, he had some health issues, some afflictions he was dealing with, and I ran up to him to speak, and I said, uh, last name is this, right? Yeah, what's your first name? He told me, I said, oh man, hey, it's good to see you again. Now, with him was this lady, now they weren't dating, I, she was, she had somebody she was with and they were all together, and I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to her, she was a nice looking young lady, uh, probably in her 20s or so, she had sunglasses on at 9 o'clock at night, that should have been my sign, outside, I mean like, she had to been up to something then, right, and I'm talking to him, catching up, reminiscing about old times, and she said, she said, with her sunglasses on at 9 o'clock, looking at me in the dark. She said, oh, you went to school with him? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Weren't in the same grade, but we went. She said, and look at you now, that white picket lifestyle you're living. And I thought, that lady, she don't know me. She don't know nothing about me. And I thought, man, this lady got the devil in her. And she just stared at me down. And there was, there was some of them high dollar glasses. You couldn't even see her eyeballs on the other side, though. And I'm just trying to talk, and I begin to notice he got this satanic ring on. And I look over at her. She's got one on, too, and they got these satanic shirts on. I'm like, how did I miss the devil standing next to me? He was there the whole He was in her the whole time, and I didn't know her from anybody, and she didn't know me either, but what was in her knew me. Insulted me, come up against me, didn't know anything about me. That's real. I went in the store. I said, Lord, I had to step in the rest. I said, Lord, you watch the car or, or go get in it or send Nathan or something. She said, why? I said, they some weird folks outside. I don't steal my truck. <laughs> she done made it up in her mind. I had too much money. She may steal my truck from me. And man, I had it running. It keeps within the ignition. That spirit, oh, he knows. He knows. And whenever you get up against the righteousness of God, it will make you feel uncomfortable. 
and it will make you feel like nobody loves you. Because he's got a hold of your mind. Got all up in your spirit. Intermingled his with yours. We've got to get to a place where we realize that it's not my brother or my sister that's my enemy. God's not the enemy. God loves you. Your brothers and sisters, they may not always agree with you. You may not always agree, but they love you. Stop allowing the enemy to tell you a lie. Stop allowing him to put. And the easiest way to you to win that battle is to get in Christ. Get a renewing. Get a outpouring. Surrender. Let it all go. Sister, if you'll sing, I want to open the altars tonight to everyone. Just for a good old-fashioned renewing. And just good old-fashioned, just refreshing in the Lord tonight. If we could, let's sing. And unless I'm not, I'm not saying anybody's a sinner. You need to come and repent so you can be. We all just need a good old fashioned overflow. Let's open these altars tonight, sister. Sing us a beautiful song of worship to the Lord. Almighty God, we praise you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, I want to invite you into my heart right now. Lord, I want to make a space in my spirit for you, Jesus. Lord, I love you, Jesus. Oh, come on, bring somebody to the altar with you. Oh, somebody step forward and just get a good renewing and a refreshing in your spirit. I surrender all to you. God, receive all glory tonight. Lord, receive all praise tonight, Jesus. Lord, to God be all of the glory and praise and honor. You, God, are worthy, Lord. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Come on, let's lift up some worship and a banner of praise. I surrender all to Hallelujah, you. Jesus. I love you, Lord. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Mighty God, we praise you, Lord. Withholding nothing. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. We feel so good. To cast every care on the Lord. It feels so good to offload every weight of sin. Every burden. Let down your yoke and take on the light yoke of the Lord. Can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away. Myself, I, I give, give myself, myself to you. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Away. I give my 
thyself away so you can use me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope tonight I have said something across this pulpit that has fed you spiritually. I hope it was something that lifted your spirit and allowed you to see hope. If we could, let's bow our heads. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer as we dismiss. Lord, I love you tonight, Jesus, and I thank you, God, for your mercies, your love, your grace, every blessing. God, we do not deserve, but God, you have been so faithful. Lord, if my mind, my thoughts betray me, Lord, let your spirit get my attention. Let the word of God turn my eye. Lord, help me to win the battle in my mind. God, give me victory over every enemy. Lord, let this mind be in me that was in you. Lord, I pray, God, for renewing in my mind as you transform this body. Lord, I give you praise in the name of Jesus. God bless you all tonight. Greet someone before you leave.